English Mason. My name is Ray Siang. My name is Meryl Fay. My name is Nancy. My name is Najira. My name is Namira. Today, we will be talking about osteoarthritis. Madam Rebecca, a 54-year-old retiree, visited the boy clinic today, complaining of right knee and right hip pain for the past 6 months. She mentioned that her joint felt stiff, especially when she wakes up in the morning or after sitting down for too long, and her right knee cracks when she gets out of the bed. The cracking in the joint goes away after she finishes her breakfast, but her right knee joint will hurt when she walks to the market for grocery shopping. Physical examination of the right knee reveals a cool effusion in the lateral aspect without redness or warmth. The joint is stable with mild various misalignment. Range of motion is not restricted, but Madam Rebecca notes mild discomfort for full extension. There is no obvious popliteal cyst. After a series of diagnostic investigations, the attending doctor started her on PO ibuprofen 200mg TDS and PO prednisolone 5mg OM. Talking about the probable diagnosis, the first one will be joint osteoarthritis related to joint inflammation as a result from cartilage degeneration. And the second one will be osteoarthritis related to joint injury as a result from CT too long and cracking of the right knee. Okay, now I'll be talking about the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis. It is mainly a wear and tear disease as we start age, and it mainly occurs as we start aging. This, this is caused by this will cause bone remodeling due to uh, active response of chondrocytes that can be found in the articular cartilage and the inflammatory cells in the surrounding tissues. What chondrocyte mainly is, it is a cell that produces a matrix in the cartilage that sticks onto it. This will cause a breakdown of collagen and proteoglycan, which will, start break, which will break the articular cartilage. The underlying subchondral cartilage will then cause sclerosis, and then after that it will also cause bone remodeling, and then thus causing osteocytes and cystis. Osteoarthritis is a wear and tear disease which the cartilage degenerates over the time. Next, genetics. Third, gender. Women are most likely to develop osteoarthritis. Fourth, obesity. Increased weight can add stress to the joint and fat tissue produce proteins that cause inflammation in or around the joints. Fifth, joint injuries can be due to sports or accident, and repeated stress on the joint can also be caused by sports or working lifestyle. 7. Bone deformities might be due to malformed joints or defective cartilage. Lastly, certain metabolic diseases such as diabetes. Being overweight is a common trait in diabetes type 2 patients, which will increase the risk factor for osteoarthritis. And in diabetes patients, there is an added risk to the loss of subchondral bone through lower bone mineral density and higher protein. Additionally, high glucose exposure cause a decrease in production of collagen which increases in inflammation. And next, hemochromatosis is a disorder of the iron metabolism may lead to abnormalities such as joint abnormalities. Joint disease often is, a, is an early manifestation of hemochromatosis. Next, I'll talk about the clinical manifestation of osteoarthritis. First, pain of the affected joint. It might hurt during or after movement. Second, stiffness. It is noticeable about awakening or being inactive for too long. Third, tenderness. It can be felt when applying pressure near or to the joint. And fourth, losing flexibility. It's a losing of full range of movement. Fifth, ground sensation. It can be felt when using the joint and might have present of popping or cracking. Six, bone spurs. It's the extra bits of bones that feels like hard lump uh, forming near the affected joint. Lastly, swelling, caused by soft tissue inflammation forming around the joint. Now, I will talk about the diagnostic test and assessment. Firstly, physical test. Your total might check your affected joint for any tenderness, swelling, redness, and flexibility. Next, radiological test such as X-ray, which can show image of bone spurs, but unable to show image of cartilage. But it can still be reviewed through narrowing of space between bone in your joints. Next, MRI. It produces detailed image 
of cartilage as well as bone and soft tissue. But MRI isn't commonly needed to diagnose osteoarthritis but can help to gain more information in complex cases. Lastly, laboratory tests such as joint fluid analysis. Your doctor might use a needle to draw fluid for your affected joint and send it for tests to detect for any inflammation and to determine whether pain is caused by gout or an infection rather than osteoarthritis. Lastly, blood tests. Even though there isn't any blood test for osteoarthritis, but it can still detect other causes of joint pain such as rheumatoid arthritis. I'll be talking about medical and surgical management. For the first one is hyaluronic acid injection. It works by acting like a lubricant and a shock absorber. Next will be NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids. For surgical management, one of it can be joint resurfacing, osteomy, and joint replacement. This example of resurfacing and total hip replacement, and this is the osteotomy. Yeah, the nursing care management. This is the possible nursing problems. First is acute pain, chronic pain in relation to joint degeneration, as evidenced by knee and right hip pain for the past six months, joint stiffness, knee pain and mild varus misalignment. This is a deformity. It is an excessive inward or outward angulation. Second is impaired mobility in relation to joint pain as evidenced by range of movement. It is not restricted but there is a mild discomfort with a full extension. Third is risk of injury in relation to altered mobility pain or discomfort as, as, as evidenced by pain upon walking far distances. So the first nursing problem which is acute and chronic pain is in relation to disease process. So first intervention is obtain a pain score from patients such as location of pain, propagation of pain, quality, type, duration, region or radiation, and history of pain. The rationale is to get a full history of pain for further evaluation and proper management, such as applying hot or cold pack to the joint. Heat packs allows blood flow to an area through the reduction of pain reflexes by dilating the blood vessels, thus promoting blood flow. Heat packs are usually more effective in treating sore joints caused by arthritis, and it reduces pain and slows down inflammation rate and reduces the risk of swelling and tissue damage. This is, this is for cold pack. So this is the mnemonics for pain assessment. And this is an example of um, what is used in the hospital for cold and hot pack therapy. The next testing problem is impaired mobility in relation to pain. We should assess patient's weight because excessive weight adds stress to painful joint. Second is to assess patient's ability to perform activities of daily living. This also tells the nurse the severity of the osteoarthritis. Third is to assess vital signs of the patient after physical activity. Because increased heart rate, respiration rate, and blood pressure indicates increased effort and discomfort when doing given tasks or ADLs. Third is to encourage patient to increase activity. Because increased acti increasing activity will allow maintaining joint functions and pro promoting independence. Fifth is to assess range of motions and encourage range of motions exercises. Muscular exertion through exercise promotes circulation and free joint mobility and strengthens muscle tones and prevents contractures. So these are the examples of what an elderly or the patient can do at home. And this is an example of a joint with increased pressure due to obesity or extra weight. Last but not least, nursing problems which is risk of injury in relation to pain and altered mobility. If the patient is overweight, encourage the patient to lose weight. Extra stresses to the joint such as excessive weights can accelerate joint cartilage deterioration. Second, encourage patient to use assistive devices such as walking cane and grab bars in toilets. This is to prevent accidental falls. And third is to ensure bed is at the lowest, even in hospital or at home. This is to promote safety of the patient. Last is to assist in passive and active range of, move, range of motion 
according to patient's tolerance level. This is to maintain and enhance muscle strength and to prevent muscle atrophy, which is muscle wastage. Muscle wastage and this is the normal leg. Now I'll talk about the indication of the drugs. First is ibuprofen. It's used to relieve pain from various conditions such as headache, dental pain, menstrual cramps, muscle aches or arthritis. Ibuprofen is a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It works by blocking your body's production of certain natural substances that cause inflammation. This effect helps to decrease swelling, pain or fever. The next drug I'll talk about is prednisolone. Prednisolone is a man-made form of a natural substance, also known as costocosteroid hormone, made by the adrenal gland. It is used to treat conditions such as arthritis, blood problems, immune system disorders, skin and eye conditions, breathing problems, cancer, and severe allergies. It decreases your immune system response to various diseases to reduce symptoms such as pain, swelling, and allergic type reactions. Next, I will move on to the special form of each of the drugs that was prescribed. First is ibuprofen. This medicine may cause stomach bleeding. Daily use of alcohol and tobacco, especially when combined with this medicine, may increase your risk for stomach bleeding. Therefore, limit the alcohol intake and stop smoking. Next, this medication may make you more sensitive to the sun. Limit the time in the sun. Avoid tanning boots and sun lamps. Use sunscreen and wear protective clothing when you're outdoors. Tell your doctor right away if you get sunburn of any skin blisters or redness on your skin. Also, if you prefer is contraindicated for the treatment of preoperative pain in the setting of coronary artery bypass graft surgery. The next drug I'll talk about is prednisolone. So, the special point of prednisolone. Prednisolone may cause vaccines not to work as well. Therefore, do not have any immunizations or vaccinations while using this medication without the consent of your doctor. Open contact with people who have recently received live vaccinations, example, such as flu vaccine that is inhaled through the nose. Next, this drug may make you dizzy. Alcohol and marijuana, also known as cannabis, can make you more dizzy. Do not drive, use machinery, or do anything that needs alertness until you can do it safely. Therefore, and also limit your alcohol beverage indications from ibuprofen, increase risk of bleeding due to clotting disorder, alcoholism, high blood pressure, heart attack, chronic heart failure, stroke, stomach or intestinal ulcer, liver problems, bleeding of the stomach or intestine, pregnancy, and for the allergies, it will be salicylates or NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And for another contraindication for prednisolone, it will be hypothyroidism, diabetes, cataract, high blood pressure, chronic heart failure, osteoporosis, seizures, infection caused by the varicella zoster virus, missile, and allergies will be corticosteroids, glucocorticoids. The mechanisms of actions for drugs for ibuprofen is inhibitions of COX1 and COX2. COX means an enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of arachidonic acid to prostaglandins and that has two isoforms which one is involved in the creation of prostaglandins which mediate inflammation and pain. It also helps with anti-inflammatory and energetic effect largely due to blockade of prostaglandin synthesis at target tissues. Also as antipyrectic, which helps in the synthesis at hypothalamus. For mechanisms of action drug for prednisolone, it's elicit mild mineral corticoid activity and moderate anti-inflammatory effects, which helps in control or prevents inflammation by controlling rate of protein synthesis, suppressing migration of polymorph nuclear leukocytes. Polymorphonuclear means a type of white blood cells such as neutrophils and basophils. And fibroblasts reversing capillary permeability and stabilizing lysosomes at cellular levels. Fibroblast means a cell in connective tissue which produces collagen and other fibers. So for your three adverse effects, 
for ibuprofen would be nausea, vomiting, heartburn, and peptic ulcer. For prednisolone, it will be indigestion, weight gain, and acne. Okay, so for the five nursing considerations would be obtain drug history, including use of corticosteroids. Concurrent use increases the GI adverse effects, which causes peptic ulcer. Then, administer drugs with meals to prevent gastric irritation and formation of peptic ulcer, which may lead to GI bleeding and perforation. Next would be assess for desired therapeutic effects, such as reduced inflammation and pain as evidenced by increased movements and improved activity of daily living. Because NSAIDs reduces inflammation and pain. Then, monitor coagulation studies and bleeding time. Example, bruises, abnormal and excessive bleeding. NSAIDs affect platelets regulation and prolonged bleeding time. Monitor urine output and renal function tests regularly. NSAIDs causes renal toxicity, especially for patients who take high doses and long term and use it for long term. This alone, obtain drug history including use of NSAIDs. Concurrent use of NSAIDs increases the risk of peptic ulcer formation and GI bleeding and perforation. Administer drug with meals to minimize GI side effects. Ensure patient does not stop abruptly. Dose should be tapered down gradually before discontinued as abrupt discontinuation will trigger adrenal insufficiency and shock. Assess for desired therapeutic effect. Corticosteroids reduces inflammation. Monitor for signs and symptoms for GI bleeding such as abdominal pain and black tire stones. Corticosteroids may cause peptic ulcers, especially when combined with NSAIDs. Today I'll be giving you two medications, but before we start, can I verify your name and IC number? Your name is Madam Rebecca? Yes. Alright, what's your IC number? S1234567HC. Alright, just a sec, let me double check. Okay, so today I'll be giving you two medications. The first one will be ibuprofen, the second will be prednisolone. So what you need to take note of of these two medications is that when you take these two medications, Make sure you either eat with food or drink with water to prevent your stomach from getting any upset or any stomach ache. And then for ibuprofen, when you take the medication, the effects usually come in 15 minutes to 2 hours after you take it. Then for prednisolone, what you need to take note of is you must not suddenly stop taking it. Like you must continuously take it so because if you do not, if you do not continuously take it, you will suddenly have like weakness or may suddenly faint. Then for these two medications when you take you what you another important thing you need to take note of is you must watch out for any black sterile stools when you pass motion because this will indicate any signs of gastrointestinal bleeding. Take note of these two medications uh what I said just now, okay? Alright, is there any further questions? Okay, now I'll uh, please take care of your health and now I'll be waiting for my colleague to talk to you guys about your discharge planning. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm feeling better. Okay. Can I have your name and NIC? Madam Rebecca, S123456768C. Okay, you're going home today, right? Yes. Okay, that's good for you. Okay, uh, so I have four things to tell you today before you discharge from the hospital. Uh, first, if you ever experience any severe pain in the joint or unable to move your joint or such as your joint is tendon or red, 
uh, please seek medical assistance by calling your doctor. Next, avoid activities that may put a strain on your joints uh, if you ever feel pain in your joint, in your affected joints. Third, take a, try taking a warm shower or bathe in the morning and avoid sitting still for too long afterwards or, as this will prevent stiffness. So lastly, uh, please perform active range of motion exercise uh, several, several times a day to prevent stiffness. Maybe three, four times a day. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Mary Rebecca, uh, she's your physiotherapy for today. I'll be demonstrating a few exercises you can do at home. The first leg exercise will be lifting your leg up, holding it for five to ten seconds, and then you put slowly down, and then followed by the next leg. Repeat for five to ten seconds and slowly lift your leg down. Second exercise will be called the marching exercise. So you lift up your leg, hold it for 5 to 10 seconds also, slowly lift it down, and then repeat for the next leg. Last but not least is the toe races. So you lift your ankle up, hold it for 5 to 10 seconds, slowly lift it down, and repeat for the next side. So Madam Rebecca, please don't forget the four discharge advices I've given you. Uh, remember to do your exercises at home as demonstrated, you can refer to this. Okay. And make sure to take note of the points of the medications that I talked to you about. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you.